So this is going to be a little bit different of a video. Uh, normally here on the channel, uh, I try to create videos uh, that are that are not only uh, full of information but also a little bit entertaining. A lot of times I will put effort into the way that it's edited and things like that. This video is going to be a little bit different because there's going to be like no editing. I'm literally uh, this is going to be all information focused, right? So this is going to be a long video. Uh, in the first comment, there is timestamps. Uh, there's also uh, going to be chapters here in the video where you can click through uh, and look at the different stuff because we're going to be going through uh, a print-on-demand strategy that that you can use that is that is proven uh, and that has produced a ton of results. This is going to be a very long video. And like I said, it's going to be full of information, right? This is not your typical YouTube video from me where, like I said, I am trying to entertain uh, while I am teaching, right? This is strictly going to be a, a teaching type of video. So uh, if you need to watch this multiple times, if you need to watch a little bit at a time, that's fine. Also, if you need to watch it uh, where you actually increase the speed uh, so that way you can get through it faster, uh, please do. And let me know uh, if you have any questions down in the comments. Uh, and also, if you uh, enjoy the video, drop a like because this take a, this is going to take a long time uh, for me to go through. I have a whole bunch of slides here uh, and I want to make sure uh, that you guys enjoy this stuff. This took a while to put together, so your support uh, really does help. right? So. I've been teaching print on demand now for the last couple of years. I have two students that have crossed a uh, million dollars in sales on their stores. Inside of the POD Ninjas Facebook group, uh, there's also a hashtag uh, titled POD Ninjas Student Results. Uh, literally over the last couple of years, I have sent out uh, tons of these mugs here. These are these are mugs that uh, I have created as sort of a little prize to send out to uh, clients, right? When they when they cross specific sales milestones, and so far. Uh, people who have gone through my training, people who are implementing what we're going to talk about today, uh, have generated about five million dollars on their store. Right? I I I haven't seen that uh, in terms of student results uh, with many other uh, programs out there. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want you to understand uh, that that this stuff works. Uh, you can. This is not uh, something that is that is uh, really difficult. I mean, of course it's difficult, right? But it's it's simple, right? These these fundamental things that we're going to talk about. Are are simple people that uh, are, are not really experienced in web design or marketing and all that stuff like you don't have to be an expert in this stuff again I'm not saying it's easy by any means like this is definitely not a get-rich-quick type of business but um, this this is possible to create a an awesome side hustle on Shopify uh, using print-on-demand okay and like like I said I'm just showing you this to sort of inspire you I remember when I first got started with print-on-demand uh, I felt like when I saw some of these results like this I got a little bit overwhelmed and, and a little bit discouraged I want this to inspire you right I want this to show you uh, that that success with print on demand is is possible okay like I said we're gonna be talking about a whole bunch of different stuff today okay we're gonna discuss uh, opening your Shopify store right some of the key things that you're gonna want to focus on we're gonna talk about niches we're gonna talk about products that you're gonna be selling we're gonna be talking about designs right because those three things ultimately are going to be what is going to determine the the overall success of our store right uh, we're going to talk about hiring designers because a lot of people that jump into print on demand are are not designers right they don't have a background in design they've never done anything creative and uh, you might need to work with the designer right so we're going to talk about that let's talk about store optimization things that you need to do on your store in order to actually create a great looking digital brand that people trust and that people are willing to actually make up make a purchase from there's so many stores that I have reviewed in the past uh, where where they're just not a an optimized store the, the person that's running it didn't put any effort into creating a, a branded look right and and there and then that and then they wonder why they're not making sales right you actually have to put effort into your store right everything that we're gonna go through today is, is hopefully going to be actionable uh, at times I will put examples on the screen of what I am going to be referring to now we're also gonna be talking about marketing your store uh, some key things that you need to be focused on when it comes to marketing with paid traffic primarily Facebook ads and Instagram ads uh, and we'll also talk about some organic marketing stuff uh, as well right so uh, I prefer Shopify 
If you're someone who doesn't prefer Shopify, that's fine, okay? I'm gonna go through some of the reasons why I prefer Shopify, and then maybe in the future, I'll create like a fully in-depth video where I compare uh, Shopify to Etsy, or Shopify to Teespring, or Shopify to Redbubble, or Shopify to Amazon, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna be focusing on Shopify. Obviously, when I jump into talking uh, about niches and, and uh, marketing and things like that, that's going to apply no matter what platform you're on, but I prefer Shopify. Here's some reasons why. The first uh, is you're gonna have access to more print-on-demand suppliers. Uh, on Shopify, there is a ton of really awesome print-on-demand products that you can uh, use. And if you guys check out, I have a video on my channel. Uh, it's called the, I think, I think it's called like Try These 10 Print-on-Demand Companies or something like that. There is tons of print-on-demand suppliers that are truly awesome uh, that you can work with only on Shopify, right? Of course, some of them are gonna have integrations with WooCommerce or even Etsy, uh, but for the most part, most of them are only going to be available if you have a Shopify store, okay? <clears throat> That's reason number one. <clears throat> reason number two is you're gonna have full control of branding, right? We're gonna talk a lot today uh, about actually creating a branded digital store, right? If you're on Amazon or if you're on Etsy, you can't do that because you're on their platform, okay? It, it's it's not a it's not the same, right? And like I said, we're going to go into some things today and, and talk about what a optimized digital brand uh, actually looks like. The next thing is you own it. If you're on Etsy, if you're on Amazon, if you're on Teespring, you don't own that, right? It's not your store, right? You have an account. You have an account on their platform, right? Uh, when you're on Shopify, it's yours, right? It actually becomes an asset, right? I'm not really gonna talk too much about this today, but I have actually sold print-on-demand stores in the past uh, that I have built up uh, because you own it, right? If you're if you're building out something else, like you don't really own that, it doesn't really have a ton of value to be able to sell it, right? Again, your, your goal shouldn't be to create a store to sell it, but I have heard a ton of stories of people who have built out Etsy stores uh, and then they get their account shut down or someone who has been banned from Amazon, right? Uh, when, when you're on Shopify, as long as you're not like making products that like support terrorist organizations and things like that, like you're not going to get shut down, right? You're basically, you own it, right? There's not really a risk of getting your account closed. Now, the next thing is that its purpose is a store, right? And I bring this up because a lot of people, they talk about, well, Joe, I, I really I really like uh, WooCommerce, right? I like to use WordPress. If, if you know how to use WordPress, that's fine, right? You can use WordPress. However, like I said earlier, you're, going, you're not going to have access to all of the print-on-demand suppliers. Yes, you're going to own it. Yes, you're going to have full control of branding. But if you're a beginner and you've never really done anything online, using any of these other platforms that allow you to create an e-commerce store is going to be a little bit more difficult because you're going to need to use a whole bunch of third-party tools to get things to work. If you're using WordPress, you're going to need to go get uh, like a like a checkout app. You're going to need something to be able to, to send automated emails. It's not, you know, Shopify works out of the box, right? When you when you create your account, you have a fully working store right, right away. You don't need to do anything additional. It's all built in. Uh, you're also going to have a ton of tools to provide you with analytics on your store uh, to be able uh, to, to see what's going on, right? You're going to be able to uh, look into your business and there's going to be a whole bunch of reporting, okay? Any other platform like WordPress or Wix or Squarespace or something like that is not going to have the same level of detail when it comes to all of that stuff, right? And then lastly, you can get up and running in a day. Like I said, uh, the, everything is everything that you need is inside of the Shopify store, right? If you're going on any of these other platforms like Wix or WordPress, you're going to likely need some other things and, and possibly have to do uh, some sort of coding uh, that is, you know, like I said, if you if you prefer that, if you know how to do it, then that's fine. Like I said, if you want to do a WordPress store or WooCommerce or Big Commerce, Big Commerce or something like that, that's fine. You're going to have full control of branding. You're going to own it. Uh, you just might need to do some other things in the background to actually get it to work, and you might not have access uh, to all of the suppliers uh, that, that you would have access to on Shopify, right? <clears throat> A lot of talking today. So when it comes to opening your store, right? 
Before I go through some things here, if you guys want to uh, access, like if you're if you're like, yes, I want to build a Shopify store, uh, go into the POD Ninjas Facebook group. There's a link in the description. Uh, in there, I have a link uh, to a step-by-step -step course that's going to show you how to actually open your Shopify store and how to get everything working, right? Uh, and this is a free course. It doesn't cost anything. Literally, it's inside of the POD Ninjas Facebook group, okay? Uh, first thing you're gonna have to decide though is what kind of store are you going to create? Uh, there's two different kinds of stores that you could create. You could create a niche store, which is basically a store that sells products to only one niche, right? Where you're creating a store uh, and all you're doing is creating designs for people who like unicorns, okay? You would then uh, make the store. Uh, you would then make the store have some sort of a domain name that reflects that, right? Like unicornthings.com or something like that. Uh, you could also uh, create a general store, right? You could create a a store that sells to multiple niches, uh, and then you would want to make sure that it is having a name uh, that that is a little bit more general, right? Like printedgifts.com or something like that. Uh, when it comes to payment accounts, uh, I live in the USA, so I basically would recommend uh, using Shopify payments and also PayPal, okay? Those are going to be two things that you can set up in about 30 seconds, right? Like I said before, if you're on WooCommerce or something like that, this, this process might be a little bit more in depth. Uh, it might take a little bit more time, but with Shopify, it's literally, you can set up your payment accounts in just a couple of minutes. And like I said, uh, inside of the POD Ninjas Facebook group, there's a free course called 123 POD, where I show you how to go through and set all of this up, okay? Uh, when it comes to creating your product line, this is the most important part, right? If you are about to launch your store, Right? Let's say you're someone that's watching this and you're like, you know what, I wanna jump into Shopify. Uh, you need to figure out <laughs> what you're actually going to be selling before you spend a whole bunch of time building out the store. Your product line is the most important part. If you create a product line full of things that people don't wanna buy, your store is going to fail. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some things that are super important. This is something that I specialize in. This is something that I work with clients with uh, on a daily basis to help them to establish winning products to sell on their store, okay? First, you're gonna to wanna to figure out how many products and designs do you want to have, right? Sometimes I have reviewed people's stores and they have like 30, 40, 50, products on their store, right? When I say products, I'm really, I'm, I'm talking about things that people can buy, right? I'm not saying different product types. I'm talking about like 30 to 50 like listings, right? 30 to 50 designs, right? That people can buy. I honestly recommend to, to keep that much smaller, okay? There's no reason why you can't launch a store with four products on it. And when I say four products, I'm talking about four listings, four things that people can buy, right? If let's say that you're choosing to sell uh, a, a hooded blanket as a print on demand product, right? Creating four different designs for that product and launching the store. The reason I say this is because sometimes so many people will uh, basically, they'll, they'll spend like months, right? They'll spend, they'll decide like, okay, I want to open a store. They'll spend a couple of days thinking about a name, uh, and then they'll go all in, and they will just spend weeks and months like creating designs, and it almost becomes like a hobby for them. It almost becomes something that they are having fun doing, which is which is fine. But what happens is they, basically, what I'm recommending is to start as fast as possible because. What you don't want to have happen is you spend two months building out this massive product catalog and then when you launch you don't make sales and then you're discouraged and you don't really want to put in the effort because you just put in two months for nothing right so what i would say is start as small as possible right create four to, to four or five six awesome products and launch right and that way you can get a really good read on if what you've done is actually going to you know take you somewhere right and I will be just completely transparent here most times like this happened for me but most times as well when I'm working with a client their first thing that they launch usually isn't what they end up succeeding with right usually your first thing uh, is something that you're going to use as a sort of a test, right? Something to get used to running a print-on-demand store. And as we continue to go through this, and we're talking about designs today and marketing, uh, there's going to be things uh, that you are going to want uh, to to eventually tweak, right? And it's important to get that initial launch, so that way you can get. Almost, you almost want to fail fast. You want to make sure that you can fail fast, so you can make adjustments. Okay. Uh, so again, when it comes to how many products and designs, keep it trim, right? Keep it slim. Don't do too many things, okay? 
Uh, naming your store, right? You want to make sure. Actually, I'm not sure if that was supposed to be in there, in there or not. I think I, I think I messed that up on, on this slide. We'll go to the next one. Um, three pillars of success. Okay, there is uh, one thing that is going to determine the the. There's one thing that's going to determine the overall success of your store, uh, which, like I talked about earlier, is your your product line, right? What you're selling. Okay, and I've broken it down into, into three pillars of success. And like I said earlier, this is something I work uh, on a daily basis with clients on. The, the key to success with print on demand is creating great products, right? Choosing great niches, selecting products that the niche wants to buy, and then making a design that someone is willing to pay for. If you can do those three things, the rest of it is going to be easy. If you can't do those three things, then nothing else you do is going to work, okay? If you guys want to check out a, a free mini course, literally about an hour worth of content where I dive deep into these three pillars, go to the POD Ninjas Facebook group. Uh, the link is in the description if you're not a member. I'll walk you through this. I'll talk about the strategies that, that I'm helping people to implement in their stores. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it today. But like I said, if you wanted to go and get a whole bunch more content about these three pillars, make sure to go to the, the POD Ninjas Facebook group and check that out. Okay. Uh, I have what's called a one product away mentality. Okay. Basically, this means that I am trying to launch winning products, right, and scale them. I b I believe that the best strategy for print on demand is try to is to try and create the the perfect combination of niche product choice and design, right, and then launch that winner and try to sell a thousand units of it, right, by using ads and, and organic methods, right. Instead of you know the alternative would be. Uh, creating like an Amazon shop or an Etsy shop and creating like 300 designs uh, and and uh, basically right people that I've talked to quick side note people that I've talked to about uh, Etsy success or Amazon success um, typically they they create like 200 or 300 designs and the goal would be to try and get like like five percent of them right so if you have 300 designs five percent would be 15 right they try to get like 5% of their products to sell like once or twice a week, right? Oops, didn't mean to go to that slide. And then the goal would be that you're making like 40 to 45, 45 sales a week, right? Because you have 15 designs that are selling a few times a week. That is, that's what they do, right? I, on the other hand, I have a one product away mentality. I want to build out a Shopify store. I want to create awesome products and scale them until I can't sell them anymore and then repeat that process over and over again, right? And like I said earlier, I showed you guys some results. For the most part, my clients, they, they do that, right? They focus on scaling winning products on Shopify, okay? That's the goal here. Uh, everything that I do is to help people to uh, achieve achieve this, right? Be, be one product away from changing everything, right? Having a winning product and selling it uh, with ads and organic methods, okay? So the three pillars. Um, like I talked about earlier, if you guys want to go to the POD Ninjas Facebook group, I have a mini course there where I talk about this this stuff for about an hour, right? There's, there's separate videos in there where I break it down, uh, but we'll give we'll give an overview here, right? So when it comes to your niche, okay, your your niche is is what gets people interested in your in your in your stuff, right? When you are you know posting your products, whether it's with an ad or an Instagram influencer, or even just on your own social media page, right? Wherever it is, <laughs> wherever it is that someone is seeing your product, okay, your niche is what's going to get them interested. If you don't have a good niche, right? If your niche doesn't represent something that people are passionate about or something that someone identifies with they're not going to be interested and they're just going to scroll right by, right? When it comes to print on demand, the key is is the niche, right? And I'll give you just an example here. Let me see if I can find uh, something that will, that will illustrate this point uh, well, right? This right here, this is something uh, that you plug into a MacBook uh, because on the new MacBooks they uh, they don't they only have Thunderbolt ports, right? And I'll quickly go through this. Meaning, if I want to use USB, I need this, right? So this product solves my problem. That's why I bought it. That's if I was to scroll by this, the, the product solving ability is is what's going to get me interested, right? And most products that are sold online are like that. They have a problem solving ability, right? They're going to make your life easier in some way. They're going to make your life fun in some way, right? That's why people buy products for the most part. But when it comes to print on demand, our uh, our products don't solve problems, right? If you're selling print-on-demand jewelry or leggings or, or hoodies or uh, even mugs or t-shirts, right, or, or anything, right? These don't solve people's problems. The only thing that's going to get them interested in your product is the niche. If you don't have a good niche, they're not going to be interested and they're not going to buy, okay? 
one thing to to note here or a couple things to note you want to avoid abstract niches don't create a store where you're just doing like abstract patterns on leggings or abstract patterns on tote bags or something like that like those things right like sometimes people say like oh i'm an artist and i want to i want to sell my own abstract art well again like i'm sure your art is great however this business model is not set up for that right you you are not going you you should not have a one product away mentality with your art right if you want to sell your art on shopify that's fine but you're probably not going to use facebook ads to sell it you're probably just going to focus on you know maybe creating a blog for yourself and uh, showcasing your stuff there and, and hoping that a few people buy it here and there right you're not really going to turn selling your art on shopify to to people that have never heard to, of you before uh into a side hustle right uh, the next thing is you're not creating a clothing line. I talk to so many people and I review so many stores uh, from time to time here on the YouTube channel and inside of the Pewdie Ninjas Facebook group where people have created themselves a clothing line. They have basically gone through uh, and they have, um, you know, created a logo and they've thrown it on t-shirts and hats and, and mugs and all this random stuff right and they're selling they're creating a clothing line right that's not what this is if someone scrolls by your t-shirt on let's say you're running a Facebook ad and the person that's gonna see the ad has never seen your brand before and they just scroll by and your t-shirt has like a little logo right here like that, that they're not gonna be interested in that right you'd be much better off creating a complete niche specific design right a design that represents a niche, right? A real niche here, okay? You gotta pick a niche, you can't, this is not clothing line, this is not abstract designs, okay? The next part, uh, or, or and like I said, niche multiplier method is the strategy that I teach. And like I said, inside of that mini course in the POD Ninjas Facebook group, I talk about this uh, in, in more depth than what we're going through today, okay? Uh, when it comes to products, right? Product choice is something that people really, really underestimate, okay? I view products, right? When you're choosing a product, right? First you have your niche, right? And then when you choose a product, this should be, you should be choosing a product to maximize sales, okay? There are so many people that jump into print on demand and their first thought is, oh, I'm gonna sell t-shirts, I'm gonna sell mugs, okay? And if you're doing that, you're going to be competing with literally like 100,000 other people in your niche that are selling the same thing, right? When it comes to like t-shirt designs and mug designs, like they are pretty saturated, right? There's only so many ways that you can create a t-shirt design, okay? They're also relatively low margin, uh, t-shirts and mugs, right? If you're using this one product away mentality, creating a Shopify store, running ads, using organic stuff uh, to sell products, there are going to be products out there that can make you a lot more money. And if you're wondering like, Joe, what product should I sell? Uh, simply finish watching this video first. If you've never seen my content before, I make I make videos all the time where I show you guys products uh, on my channel here that you should be selling instead of shirts, right? The goal with a product is to pick something that is not saturated and is going to be extremely high margin, okay? Your goal with choosing a product should be to maximize sales. If you can pick something that's not saturated and something that your niche will like, you're going to be much better off and you're going to uh, maximize sales, right? Like I said, the strategy that I teach is called strategic product selection. Inside of the POD Ninjas Facebook group, there's a mini course, like I said, where I talk about this, right? But the goal of this strategy is to take a look at your niche, figure out in my niche, like who is it that I'm selling to, right? Who, who is my ideal customer, right? By demographic, right? What age are they? What gender are they, right? Who is my ideal buyer? And then choosing a product that is perfect for them, right? Something that that person is actually going to really want, right? This is how you're gonna maximize sales, right? Not just by choosing and becoming just another t-shirt seller, like actually taking the time to think about, hey, what product does my niche want? Is there something that makes a lot of sense for my niche that is going to help me to maximize sales, right? That's the goal with product selection. Uh, and then designs, right? Like I said, niche is to get them interested. Product choice is to maximize sales and designs is to get them to buy. If you don't have a good design, they're not gonna buy, right? No matter how good your niche is and no matter how much uh, sense your product choice makes for the niche, if your design's no good, they're, they're not gonna buy, right? And that's why it's important to make sure that your designs are perfect, okay? One of the keys to this is making sure they are recognizable. And what I mean by that is a lot of times I will review designs. I'll review stores and, and stuff like that. I'll start working with a client or something and uh, they'll show me some stuff. They'll show me designs and I'll say to them, Hey, I'm not really sure, uh, what, I'm not really sure what niche this is. I just want to take a sip of coffee real quick. Cause my throat is getting a little bit dry from talking so much. I'll say, Hey, I don't really understand 
this design. I don't really understand what niche this is for, right? And that's because the design isn't recognizable, right? When you are creating a design, one of the things that, that I teach is called undercover design hacking. Like I said, go into the POD Ninjas group. There's a mini course there where I talk about this in, in more depth. But basically, this process is all about ethically stealing best-selling design ideas. And and I know every time I say ethically steal, uh, people people kind of go, "Oh, Joe, that doesn't sound right, right? That doesn't. It, it's it's just words, right? Ethically steal means do research." and find something, find design concepts that are selling and then create your own version of them based on what you find, right? Obviously don't copy uh, what other people are doing. Uh, don't steal designs, that, that's not what you wanna do here. But the goal is, you know, you don't need to think of your complete design from scratch. You don't need to reinvent the wheel within your niche. You can literally go online, you can do some research and you can, and you can find best-selling designs and then you can create your own version of it, right? A lot of times what I do with clients is if we find a best-selling design on, on a specific product, my clients will, will, will choose a different product, right? Another one that makes more sense for the niche and then they'll create, you know, a, a version of that best-selling design from the other product and then they'll, they'll be able to almost like steal that market share because they're offering something different, right? That's the point of undercover design hacking. And like I said, go into the POD Ninjas Facebook group, these three pillars that we just went through around niches, products, and designs, I go in depth on them there, okay? Um, when it comes to working with a designer, right? A lot of you guys are going to be jumping into print on demand. You might not have a ton of experience with design. You might not know how to use graphic design software. That's okay. The majority of uh, the clients that I work with are not designers themselves. They're working with designers. They're, you know, you can go on Fiverr, you can go on Upwork, you can go on Design by Ninjas. You can even go into a Facebook group and make a post and simply just say, hey guys, I'm new to print on demand. I'm looking for a designer. Does anybody have uh, any recommendations, right? The key to this though is giving them a full description of your design, okay? Most times when it comes to, you know, they're, they're not that expensive, right? A lot of people when they think about hiring a designer, uh, they they feel like they're going to have to spend like $100 or $200 per design. You can you can buy designs, you know, simple designs for simple products like for like 10 bucks. As you get more advanced, right? You can you can spend 20, 30, uh, all the way up to like 50 bucks, right? Per per design. And and the reason I talk about that is because your your designer that you're going to be working with from from wherever it, it's it's going to be like ordering food meaning you're not going to have you're not going to give them like a rough idea of what you want and then they're just going to go and imagine the rest of the design for you you need to give them a full description here okay you need to make sure that you are providing them with exactly what you want okay some things to think about are what shapes are inside the design, right? What images, what colors, what what text, and, and how does the text look, right? What's the font like? What is, you know, well, does it have any effects on it, right? Is it, you don't want your text to just look like the text on the screen right now, right? This is, this looks like Microsoft Word, right? You wanna make sure that your text is dynamic, right? Also, how it's arranged, right? Let's say that you're selling uh, a, a, uh, a hooded blanket, right? Or, or whatever product, right? You want to really describe like where the elements are on the design, right? Because obviously, if you're selling a T-shirt, it's all going to be right here, right? And even if you are selling a shirt, like you need to tell them like where the stuff is, right? So many times, I see people struggle with designers, and they end up spending way too much money because they don't know how to describe a design, right? And like I said, this is something I work with clients on all the time, so I have a little bit of experience in terms of knowing what people struggle with. Uh, but these are some things that that you want to focus on in terms of actually making sure that you can give it designer a great uh, description of your design okay store optimization right again don't if you don't have a store if you're just jumping in and you don't have a store you you, you should not be building out your store first right a lot of times i'll say to people uh like i'll start talking to them about like product lines right and they'll and they'll say well i'm gonna i'm gonna build the store first and then i'm gonna figure that out well honestly you can't really build a store unless you have your designs right you need to have your designs to build the store uh because you know regardless of what you're uploading for products it's good to have good imagery on your store and a lot of times you can use your actual designs to create that imagery okay so store optimization, right? After you've spent time, you've, you've done a thorough job on your product line, you've established what it is you actually want to sell, now it's time to optimize the store, right? And we're gonna talk about some things here to make this a little bit painless and, 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 and more so simple, okay? I want you to think about what branding means. Okay, branding. A lot of times, people people don't really get the the gravity of this and how important it is. Okay, branding is the perception 
of your store, of your brand, of your products in the eyes of the customer, okay? Think about when you walk into an actual store, right? Let's say that you're in the mall, okay? And you're walking through the mall and um, you see stores, right? Those stores, they've done a lot for branding, right? Sometimes the exterior of the store uh, is going to be really, you know, it's going to match the, the niche that they're in, right? I'll give you an example too, right? You ever been to an Olive Garden, right? Olive Garden, if you if you look at it, it looks like a building from Italy, right? The entire thing looks like it was built uh, to be a, a restaurant in Italy, right? There's a, There's another store. Uh, called uh, Cabela's, right? They sell like hunting and fishing equipment, right? They have tons of stuff inside the store that that really makes them seem credible, right? Within the niche, You're, you, when you look at these real stores, if they took out all the merchandise and you just looked at them, you might be able to guess what they sell, right? And that's because they put effort into branding. And so many people, when they create a Shopify store. They don't do any of that. They create a really basic logo. Uh, their their mockups that they use, their product images, they, they basically just use the default ones that the that the print on demand app gives, and they don't do anything when it comes to like a product description uh, and and things like that. Right? You need to make sure that you're putting effort into your into your store brand just as much as a brick and mortar store is. Okay. Here's some things that you can do. Here's like five things uh, to focus on when it comes to uh, optimizing your digital brand. Right. First is your logo. Right. Keep it simple, but but make sure that you are creating a niche specific logo. If there are any icons or anything like that that refer to your niche, use them in the logo. Okay. If you're creating a general store, right? What what things could you put in the logo that relate to e-commerce, right? Is there anything that you could put like digital icons and things like that in your logo that's going to help you uh, with creating a good logo? Now, another thing I'll say it, before we jump into some of the other things is keep this simple. Sometimes what I see people do is you know they are super excited they start playing around with like graphic design software and they put all these different effects on their logo and then the logo ends up looking like something that was created uh in microsoft word in 1995 do you remember if you guys remember i i was i was uh in high school in the early 2000s and I remember uh, playing around with Microsoft Word and using Microsoft Word art and creating like these really fancy presentations. That's what people's logos sometimes look like when they create them uh, themselves. You can go on Fiverr.com, you can pay someone five or $10 to make you a really simple and clean logo if you can't do it yourself, okay? The next thing is colors, right? Keep the colors simple. Right? You want to choose colors of the store that, that are going to make sense next to each other. Sometimes I see people give their store like a yellow background, right? So then they have a yellow background on the store and then all the text is black and then it just kind of hurts your eyes a little bit, right? Keep things simple. If there are colors that make sense for your niche, use those, right? If there's not colors that make sense for your niche, choose a couple of different colors that look good together, right? Go on Google, type in what colors look good together and, and create a color scheme for your store, okay? Product images, right? A lot of times people, I'm gonna put some stuff on the screen as we're talking about this. Uh, product images, uh, you know, you, you wanna make sure that your product images look good, right? Of course, sometimes you're gonna have to just use uh, the default image from the print on demand app, but there are times where you can add things, you can put a background behind your mock-up or something like that. You can even just put your logo on the product image. Like if you have your square product image, put your logo up in the top right, right? That's gonna just help a little bit with, with branding, okay? It's almost like if you go into a store, right? let's say you go into like a Levi's store or like Tommy Hilfiger or something like that. There's probably going to be pictures around the store on the walls and things like that of people wearing the clothes. And most times it's not just going to look like a mock-up, right? It's not just going to be a picture of the pants with a white background, right? That That's sometimes what you don't want to have, right? And again, if you're, if, if you're selling things that are like not really t-shirts and things like that, this is going to be a little bit easier because the mock-ups that you get from the print on demand app are usually better. But like I said, some simple, simple tips like add your logo, things like that and make it a whole lot better. Product descriptions. When you create a product inside of the print on demand app, uh, it's going to generate a description for you. Now, what you don't want to do is just use that description, right? Something like if you're selling a hoodie, It'll say like, uh, this hoodie is the perfect addition to your wardrobe. Uh, our customers love it, right? And then it lists like four bullets. It says like polyester, cotton blend, uh, does not shrink, and like high quality fabric or something like that. 
You want to come up with your own description. You want you want to write things that are specific to your niche. Think of ways that you can that you can use words that would resonate with the niche. That you can write something funny. Uh, that you can write something that'll really layer in your brand, right? You don't want to just have it be super generic because if someone, like I said earlier, is coming from like an ad, they've never seen your store before, right? And and you have to make sure that your store has a has a, a brand to it right because branding is the perception of your store in the eyes of the customer right and these things that we're talking about are ways that you can achieve that okay uh, lastly is trust elements okay you want to make sure your store is trustworthy a lot of times people use uh, like these really old-fashioned trust badges that sort of just look a little bit scammy at this point uh, there's a concept that I teach called a branded trust badge uh, basically, this is where you create something that does the exact same thing as one of those old-fashioned trust badges, except it has your logo in it, uh, and it's a little bit more niche-specific. Uh, it's it's a branded trust badge. Okay. Uh, the second thing is social proof, right? If your store is new, obviously it's going to be tough to have social proof, but social proof is just proof that that you have. Uh, happy customers, right? If you get, if you start making sales, like try to get reviews, right? There's apps that you can use on your store uh, that you can use to get reviews from customers. If you don't have any sales yet, one thing you can do is order samples of your stuff and take your own photos and just put them on your store somewhere. That's going to make your store feel just a little bit more real. If you don't want to invest in samples, that's fine. Another way you can do social proof is just highlight social media pages that you have, right? If you have an Instagram for your store or for your niche, highlight it on your store in some way. This is going to show that your store exists in other places than, than just on your store, right? This is going to help you as a new store. And then as you begin to build it out, you're going to want to create those uh, those those reviews right you're also you know some print on demand apps are going to provide you uh, actually with like stock footage right I know like shine on for example I think printful has some of this I think pillow profits has some of this where they actually have um, videos that don't have any of their branding on it that shows like products being created in their factories you can actually use some of that stuff on your store to show that you're not just another uh, online store right that you're actually a real business, right? That's the goal here with digital store optimization. Okay, uh, here's the same slide over again. Like I said, we're not, not doing any editing here. Uh, when it comes to marketing, a couple different things, right? For me, right, I really focus on two different avenues, right? The first is organic, okay? using organic methods to get people to your store. When I say organic, that just means you're not spending any money, right? Organic traffic is simply just a result of things that you are doing, right? You're doing things that are getting people to come to your store without you having to pay for that traffic, okay? And then obviously paid traffic has to be a major part of what you're doing because the goal with all of this, like I said, is to have a one product away mentality, right? To be able to create a store with a really slim product catalog with the perfect combination of niches, products, and designs, and then to use paid traffic to scale that, right? The more you begin to spend on advertising, the more sales you can bring in. Obviously at the beginning, you're not gonna be spending a whole bunch of money on ads because it's new, but the goal would be to build up, right? To slowly, Start to scale that uh, and, and make sure that you can get uh, people to to uh, to come to your store to buy your awesome stuff, right? We're going to talk about these two things. We'll talk about the most important stuff uh, when it comes to these things, right? So organic marketing. What I like to do, right, the primary thing that I like to do and the one that I teach to clients is uh, to help them to create uh, niche-specific Instagram accounts, right? Basically, if you've ever been on Instagram, Right? You've probably come across accounts that basically are for a specific niche, right? Like you can find an account called like I Love Unicorns or something like that or, or whatever, right? You want to create yourself one of those, right? And if you're on a general store, that's fine. Just create an account for one of your niches, right? Don't 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 make it a general account. You want it to be based on one niche. That way all of the followers belong to the niche that you're selling to. Okay. When I say optimize your bio, basically what I mean is just get your link in the bio, right? So that way when people are on your Instagram account, they can click the link and go to your store, okay? The way that you grow this following, okay? The, the idea would be, you know, to, to get this Instagram account to have thousands of followers on it because then you could potentially have thousands of people coming to your store without you having to pay for it, right? 
The way that you do this is you want to you want to cultivate content, right? You want to go out, you want to find memes, images, videos, things that relate to your niche that you can post on your Instagram account. And then the goal would be to do hashtag research. I'm not, not sure if you guys know how Instagram works. Maybe I'll do like a video in depth on this in the future, uh, like what I do with clients. But basically on Instagram, there's something called the explore page, right? The explore page is, is basically going to show you a whole bunch of stuff from people that you don't follow. And Instagram uses its algorithm to show you the right stuff, meaning it's going to look at your account. It's going to kind of determine the things that you're interested in, and it's going to show you things that you might like, right? And the way that you, let's say you're trying to sell to people who like unicorns, you would wanna make sure that you're using the right hashtags that relate to unicorns, so that way you can show up on the Unicorn Lovers Explore page and just simply get them to follow your account, okay? And then once you begin growing this account, it's going to obviously be slow at the start. I've had clients that have gotten to uh, over 10,000 followers relatively quickly though, right? If you're just being consistent with this, you can, you can do that. Uh, and then what you wanna do is run promotions, right? after you're growing the account, okay? You make a post, you, you use you post a picture of your product. You say, hey, this just launched on our store. Come, come check it out now, save 15% and free shipping with this d discount code, right? Give them a discount code, right? And then right, like link is in our bio, right? And then the goal would be, you know, if you have thousands of followers, you could potentially have a whole bunch of people that are coming to your store to check out that product and some of them are going to buy. And this is how you can make organic sales. And the goal would be to double down on this and you can even begin DMing your followers. Meaning if let's say that you are running the account and you have someone that is just constantly liking your stuff and interacting with your page and tagging their friends, like shoot them a message and just say, hey, like, we noticed you're like constantly loving our stuff. We, we really appreciate that. I'm not sure if you knew that we had merch as well. If you ever wanna check out our store, like I just wanna provide you with a discount code because you have supported us so much here, right? If you do that, 10, 15, 20 times a day, right? You can literally just copy and paste the same message every time. If you do that consistently, you will make sales through that avenue, right? You Let's say you can do that and you make three sales a day, okay? That's, that's stinking, Three times 30 is what, 90, right? That's 90 sales a month from just DMing folks. That doesn't even have, that, that's not even what you're getting from ads. That's not even what you're getting uh, from like organic people just clicking the link in your bio, right? This is actually you just taking 10 to 20 minutes a day and DMing followers once your account uh, begins to grow, right? Organic marketing on Instagram is something that so many people don't focus on. It's something that I have helped clients to do and it truly allows you to create uh, your own brand because you now have a following that you can market to without spending anything on ads, okay? Now ads. Like I said, this should be the primary method of your sales because you can scale it. You control this, right? If you want to bring more people to your store, you just increase how much you're spending, right? As you're making sales, you slowly increase that and then eventually you can begin to scale products, right? This is how clients of mine have reached a million bucks in sales. You don't do that by spending just $5 in ads, right? You eventually scale that up, okay? And a couple of things, two key things, obviously Facebook ads are a massive subject, okay? I wanna give you two tips, like two really actionable tips that you can use when you're using ads right now, right? Instead of spending like two hours going through because honestly, uh, Facebook ads are, are just like I said, they're way too in depth for this, right? Uh, when it comes to paid traffic, there is two things that you want to make sure you are focusing on. And the first is your ad creative. The second is your targeting. These two things are going to really impact the success, okay? Facebook ads and Instagram ads, when I say Facebook ads, I'm talking about Instagram as well. They they have one job, okay, just one job, right? And that is to bring people to your store. If they are not bringing people to your store, then they're not working. And if you can nail the ad creative and the targeting, you are going to be much more successful with ads because you are going to have people clicking your ad, okay? The rest of it obviously is going to be the, based on a lot of different things, but if you can nail these two things, you're gonna be much more successful, right? When it comes to your ad creative, okay? You wanna keep it simple, right? Your ad creative simply just refers to the image or the video that you are using to promote your products, right? So after you've gone through and you've built out your store, uh, you're focusing on Instagram and now you're ready to, to run ads to promote your products, right? You wanna get a really simple image or a video uh, of your product. You want it to be clean. You want it to clearly show the design. You want it to not overwhelm. You don't want it to be off-putting. 
A lot of times some people create like really fancy videos. They create something that has like a four, like a four second intro where it's just like their logo kind of floating, right? People are going to scroll right by that, right? Put your product in their face. You want it to be like a billboard on the highway, right? When people are driving by, you want it to just jump out at them, right? And show exactly what it is you're selling, okay? When it comes to like what you write on the ad, right? Like your text in the ad, don't be too salesy, right? Don't write something like, uh, this just launched, save save $10 now, free shipping, get yours while supplies last. Like you don't wanna do that, right? Don't be too salesy, keep it keep it casual, right? Call out your audience, like, like you know what I mean? Like keep it, keep it simple, okay? Uh, also, no need to include pricing on the ad. Sometimes people like put how much the product costs right in the ad, like don't do that, right? The last thing you want people to do is to make a decision about your product before they even come to your store, okay? You want them to, just get some interest and get that and click it, right? And then you can convert them on the store, okay? Keep the pricing off the ad. Uh, another thing that you can do, again, this might require a little bit of uh, a higher amount of investment, but you can order samples of your product. You can uh, order samples, you can have them shipped to you, and then you can take like your own images and your own videos to use as an ad. What the, the point of doing this is in the past, I have seen success where I actually order the sample and then I actually model it. I don't show my face in the ad or anything like that. What ends up happening is, let's say it's a hoodie, right? It's going to almost appear like it's not an ad, right? By the time someone realizes it's an ad, they're already interested because it just looks like another photo or something like that that has been posted by their friend. So they, you know, sometimes people are like trained to scroll right by ads and things like that. Sometimes if you keep it a really amateur, right? It ends up looking like another post from someone else and by like I said by the time they're by the time they realize that it's an ad, they're interested in clicking it, right? Something to think about. When it comes to targeting, okay? Targeting is is in short in short terms is just who is going to be seeing your ad, right? When you are uh, running ads on Facebook, you need to tell Facebook who who's actually going to see the ad, right? Uh, you need to make sure that whoever's seeing it is in your niche, right? So you want to make sure that your audience that you're building is good because if you're showing your product to people who are not in the niche, right? Let's say again that you're selling to people, let's say you're creating a design based on unicorn lovers and the people seeing your ad are not unicorn lovers. You're, it's not going to work, right? So your targeting is really important, right? You want to really get specific. I'll give you an example here, right? Let's say that you are targeting uh, people who really love golf, okay? Don't just type in golf as an interest because what that's going to do is it's it's probably just going to be a whole bunch of people that Facebook has determined are interested in sports, right? Because the way that interests work on Facebook is they basically take a look at uh, you know what accounts people follow, their website activity, things like that, and they determine like which interest group they're going to fall into, right? So golf is very broad, right? It's it's going to be it's going to honestly I'm a pretty big sports fan. I could be lumped into that because there's a good chance that at some point in the past I've interacted with like a golf page, right? Maybe Tiger Woods won a championship and I liked it or something like that, right? That's going to, you, you want to get specific. You want to, a better a better thing would be to go and research like really popular brands of golf clubs, right? Or really popular golf courses or something like that and target those instead of like golf as, a, as an entire thing, right? Well, no matter what your niche is, try to get a little bit more specific with your interests, right? Uh, another thing is you should be going after a specific demographic, right? If you're, let's just say again that you're doing golf, right? Of course, there's going to be men and women of all ages that could be interested in golf. However, you want to take a look at your product and figure out who is this primarily for and target them, right? If you want to experiment with the other ages and genders, that's fine. Create separate ads for those, right? Don't just target everybody at the same time. That's going to cloud your results. You really want to be able to go narrow and scale within the demographic that is going to be most likely to buy your product, okay? Now, let's say you've gone through all this, right? And, and, um, you're, you're now getting it going, right? You got your store, you, you developed an awesome product line, and uh, you're gonna be uh, launching um, ads, right? Now, wh what are you gonna do to maintain the store, right? As time goes on, well, you wanna, make, you wanna launch new products, okay? You wanna continue to, to, to do new things, right? You don't, wanna, you don't wanna eventually have like 40 products on the store, but like, you know, let's say that you're, you're making a few sales, right? Maybe once a month, try to launch something new, right? Test it with Instagram first, like so promote it to your Instagram following. 
okay? And then begin cycling through uh, with new ads. I have retargeting in parentheses there. I didn't really talk about that too much, but you always wanna make sure that you retarget. I'm not sure if you guys have ever gone on a website, let's say that you're on homedepot.com, uh, you're looking at new grills for, for, for barbecuing and things like that, and then you go back on Facebook and you start seeing ads for grills from Home Depot, right? Those are called retargeting ads. You wanna make sure you're doing that stuff. Uh, so that way when people visit your store, if they don't buy, you can hit them up with an ad. Maybe they were busy when they came to your store, right? You wanna continue to launch new products and cycle through uh, with ads and always be retargeting, okay? Uh, you can also explore Instagram influencers, right? If there's already an established page within your niche uh, on Instagram, you can go to them, reach out and, and have them make a post for you, right? Promoting your stuff, okay? Um, double down on organic, right? Once, if you, if you, again, Facebook ads should be the primary thing that you focus on. However, you need to make sure that you are cultivating that organic traffic as well. Because what can happen is, let's say that you put the effort in, right? You can become one of those accounts on Instagram that has hundreds of thousands of followers, right? You can literally have an endless supply of people that are interested in your products if you just double down on the organic traffic strategies, right? Uh, another thing you can do as well, we didn't talk about this today, but you can experiment with SMS, which is text message marketing uh, and email marketing as well, right? Those are two things that you can use uh, that are going to allow you to take your store uh, even higher, right? And lastly, build brand, right? Build the brand, keep doing things, order samples, right? Like as things become bigger for you, order samples, right? Uh, work with more influencers, right? Do contests, do giveaways, things like that, right? The goal here after all this is done is to build that actual brand. And like I said, you, because you chose Shopify, you have the option of eventually selling your store if you want to. Something I've done in the past, I'm not saying you have to do it, but it's something that you can do, right? Um, and uh, and that's that's basically what I wanted to talk about today, folks. The this was uh, this was a long video. Um, hopefully, you guys got something out of it. If you did, make sure to to drop the like because this took a while to put together. And if you guys want more information, uh, if you've watched it this far and you're and you're like, you know what, like this sounds good. I want to I want to do this right. And you want help? Um, there's a link in the description of this post of this video uh, where you can work directly with me to create your product line. There's a program that I have called the print on demand challenge. It's a, it's a coaching program where I help you with your niche. I help you with your product choice. I help you with your designs, right? Because like I said earlier, those are the keys uh, to, to print on demand is making sure that you have a great product line. And like I said, if you guys want to work with me, go check that out. Uh, you'll get personal help. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to go through all of my premium training uh, and get feedback from me every step of the way. And if not, at least just join the POD Ninjas Facebook group. I do weekly live trainings there. Uh, I do product reviews. Print on demand companies send me their products from time to time, and I do reviews there. Uh, and there's, at the time of filming this video, uh, there's over 40,000 members there. So uh, if you guys wanted to join a community uh, with a whole bunch of other print on demand sellers, you should definitely check it out. Um, and like I said, drop a like on the video. This took a long time to put together uh, and uh, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, and if you did, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and if not, let me, know, let me know what I can do next time to make the video better. Um, and uh, that's all I got folks. Thanks for watching.